Time now for this week's Health Matters. PA Lynn Zabo, Paul Kritz from KFO Community Radio here. And uh, uh, Lynn, I guess we're talking about sunshine? Kind of. Vitamin D. Vitamin D. Yeah, which is kind of two sources, sunshine being one of them. What's the other but, one? Milk? Uh, yeah, quasi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so vitamin D. I understand that vitamin D, we've talked about this in the past in, in with uh, episodes and or in episodes. And it's a concern for basically what? Anybody north of the Bay Area, what's there's there's a specific like latitude, isn't there? Yeah, it's about the Bay Area, but it's such an important thing for health, though. I think the I think the cool thing is, and what we're focused on today is the myriad of reasons that you should consider either supplementing or hanging out in the sun more. Okay, so okay. it's super big deal. Most common nutritional deficiency in the world. Mm. Yeah. And um, most people just don't get enough from diet or, or sunlight for a lot of reasons, you know, malabsorption or med interference. Kidney disease is a big one that mm -hmm. I've learned about in researching this. And obesity can all contribute to low levels. Wow. So you can also have an inherited genetic disorder, which I had no idea. What, that just gets in the way of you absorbing yeah, being vitamin able D? to absorb it. Hmm. And most people don't even know they're deficient. That's what's the big deal. Okay. Okay. So what happens if you don't have enough vitamin D? What are the things the you The risks should... are huge and varied, okay. actually. So everybody knows about rickets, right? Impaired bone health and growth, growth, especially in children. So usually in countries outside of the United States and maybe outside of the Southwest Southeast United States, mm -hmm. um, rickets isn't a big deal. But um, in those two areas, uh, the growth of children can really be impaired because of vitamin D deficiency. You Where know, was this again? You know what rickets is. Right? Well, th okay, so rickets is like scurvy in my mind, and it just sounds like an it's old timey, a, a gross it's, thing. It's an old timey that thing you shouldn't get anymore. Where you catch on a pirate ship. I mean, so <laughs> what is rickets? I'm sorry, rickets, no, I do not. It is. It's most apparent actually on on observing somebody. It's usually a kid, and their their legs are super bowed. Okay. To the point where they can't walk effectively. So just like 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 poor development of um, poor skeletal development, yeah, bone density. Yeah, the long bones, not okay. really long, more like curved. Ah, okay. okay. All right, all right. Especially the lower ones, tib tibia and fibula. And where was the region this was a, a problem? Well, when I was training at Duke 100 years ago, it was a deal. <laughs> um, and also um, worldwide. Oh, so I thought you said there was like the southeastern United States or something. Southeastern United States, Duke being in there. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's why milk is fortified with calcium or with vitamin D, but mm. it's not always a reliable source. But here's the scary part, even beyond that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it can cause bone pain, mm -hmm. which is a common complaint. It can cause proximal muscle weakness. So proximal means toward the um, center of the body. Okay. Okay. And you know when you have to when you get older and you have to do that little rock. I've seen you do it. I've seen Mike do it too. What? And I definitely do it when you're trying to get up from a chair when there's no leg armrest. You do that little rock back and forth until you get enough momentum to actually stand. That's not why I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not doing it because I'm old. I'm doing it because I'm tall and I've always had to do things like that. Because okay. They well, may... maybe you've always been a little D deficient. That could be, actually. Because yeah. proximal, okay, so proximal muscle weakness. Are you talking about, I mean, you're talking about things toward the center, right. uh, like deeper, like core muscles? Is that what we're talking about? No, we're kind talking of... about proximal as opposed to distal. So close yeah. to the center of the body as opposed. So that particular one, and the and the legs is mm -hmm. really important for just standing up. Okay, and okay. That's important because when older people fall, mm -hmm. you know the classic help I've fallen and can't get up. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons they can't get up. Right, right. Yeah. So can so, you can you be a little more specific about the difference between a proximal and a non proximal muscle? So proximal would be like um, your upper thighs. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the important ones to to getting up. Distal would be something like your calf. Okay. In okay. comparison. Okay. Gotcha. So it's a, it's a relative kind of thing. But it also, this is the scarier part, um, it also in, uh, contributes to increased risk of pancreatic, prostate, colon, breast, and ovarian cancer. Oh, those are none of the fun ones. Wow. Wow. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it also increased risk for autoimmune disease, type 2 diabetes, pretty common up here, mm -hmm. um, heart disease, and hypertension, also oh, Del Norte favorites. And American favorites, yeah, right? American yeah, American favorites, yeah. yeah. So, 
This is a cool one and relevant to now. Um, vitamin D3 supplementation can reduce influenza risk. Okay. So if you don't want to get your flu shot, you might up your vitamin D supplements. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So especially for kids. So the, these data came out of a study in Japan where they um, placebo controlled double blinded where they gave half the group vitamin D3 and half the group a placebo. And then they, ch they looked at these school kids to see how often they were calling in sick with influenza. Mm -hmm. So this specifically looks at influenza and this is a big deal. It was a 50% drop wow. in the supplemented group. Oh my gosh. That's a huge big drop. In in medicine, we get excited if the drop is like 4%. Mm -hmm, so 50 mm -hmm. is like amazing. And then in my preg my practice, since I work with pregnant women and neonates, we screen for vitamin D deficiency to help reduce risk of preeclampsia, um, which is blood pressure um, problems in um, pregnancy, and then also preterm labor and low birth weight. But this is what blew my mind. The next one? Yeah. Yeah, no, I was reading ahead. Wow, wow. Yeah, so also mental illness seems correlated to low vitamin D levels, especially with diseases like schizophrenia, depression, a common one here, and um, cognitive dysfunction. Wow. That seems, man, so many. I know. Okay, so, are, I mean, obviously, are there vitamins that are more important than others? Well, it probably depends on the individual. Sure. It just seems so foundational. This what vitamin what a vitamin D deficiency can affect. I mean, is it the same? Do you get uh, the same sort of scary list of, of of things from a vitamin A? Well, vitamin A deficiency can kill you, right? No, no, you can overdose on vitamin A. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Can. Yeah. So it just it just seems like it, it affects everything. This is this is crazy. Wow. Yeah, and I I didn't really know that, and hmm. I think vitamin D is kind of like medically in vogue right now to mm -hmm. focus on it but still there's a lot of people here as i look through charts and stuff that, who never really had their vitamin d measured right. and there's no super reason to expect that they would be like pound and milk products necessarily <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. especially an adult right right so so this comes to what can the average del norte do mm -hmm. okay um, so ask your provider if you've had your levels tested. I think a lot of people have levels tested and they never know it. Mm -hmm. You know, it never comes up for conversation because it's really not the most important part of those seven minutes. Okay. Um, in the exam room, but ask your provider if you've had it tested or go to my chart and check it out. And I'm, and then ask for testing if the answer is no. Mm hmm so I suppose this begs how often should you have it tested? I think every year or two. Okay. And you might consider testing it this time of year because if you tested, let's say, summer solstice. You're going to get a better. You're yeah. going to get, you're going to look better on paper than you really are. It's kind of silly, but would it be, would it be uh, efficacious? Is that a word? Uh, sure. To do, a, a, um, uh, to like test once in the summer, once in the winter and get an average that way? Is that like such a thing? Like a baseline vitamin D sort of throughout the year for I don't you? think an average is as helpful as a okay. low. Okay. Value. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. And then this is the important part. If, if your value comes in low, get treated. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I, I have a hard time. I'll send in prescriptions to pharmacies and, and they... You know, they're busy and, and maybe insurance doesn't cover it and they don't want the patient to yell at them and they'll say, hey, it's over there on aisle 11C, go get it yourself. And then the patient's like, no, that wasn't <laughs> in my budget this week. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that. So is there a difference if you are, I'm sorry, I interrupted you just now, you were going on. No. Okay, go. is there a difference between over-the-counter vitamin D supplements that you can buy and say something you get a prescription for? Yeah, one one has provider involvement. That's the only difference. That's the only difference, yeah. though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I usually prescribe about uh, maybe two thousand to five thousand international units, depending on who I'm treating and what. Some of the values I'm seeing back are, especially in pregnant women, are like super low. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so thirty is kind of the cutoff point between normal and not normal. Mm -hmm. And I rarely see somebody as high as fifty. Wow. So wow. most people are like 29.5, uh -huh. you know, just like a squeaker. But I see a lot of uh, first trimester pregnant women whose numbers come back like 10 
her life. Well, is is that because of just the sort of the drain that the that the developing baby has? The developing fetus. No, at that fetus. point, that that it's an embryo, and it's super. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's like eight or nine weeks pregnant. Uh huh. And that's, so, what would be the connection then between pregnancy and lower numbers? I think we just have a lot of people up here who don't have, um, you know, adequate vitamin D intake, mm -hmm. okay. especially during the winter. Okay. So, I, so I don't think I don't think there's a drain or anything until later second trimester is when those drains start to happen. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so get treated if your levels are low. Take it seriously. Um, and then responsible sun exposure is important. And this this. You probably this ought to be taught. It leads into the next episode bit. about skin cancer, right? <laughs> right. So, so our dermatology colleagues have been super great in advocating for um, you know sunscreens and stuff, and and people now know that they probably ought to use the higher SPF as opposed to the lower because mm -hmm. if you have a hundred SPF and you just put too like not not enough on, then uh -huh. you really got thirty. And, um, you know, that it changes with the amount kind of per surface area. And over time and all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and whether you, you know, you hit the waves or like whatever. So um, it's, <laughs> they have done such a good job with this that they might be contributing to this. And I can hear my colleague, Jesse Voss, you know, going, oh. <gasps> What? <laughs> he knows this. He, he's a bright boy. Anyway, um, so I think it makes sense to uh, as close to noon as possible. So the highest point in, of the sun in the sky, mm -hmm. maybe to go out into your backyard if it's sunny, like today, even though it's cold, it definitely is bright and shiny out there. Right. And, um, you know, maybe go out um, in like a tank top or something and get some sun on your back or your arms. Mm -hmm. Infrared rays which are what carries the vitamin D to the body. That was my, it's one not of really my vitamin D. allows the vitamin D. That triggers the vitamin right, D to be. Reaction okay. gotcha. um, to be manufactured in the body. Um, it can go through clothes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Unless you're, you know, you got something cool from REI that blocks it. But, can it go um, through, can it go through clouds too? Yeah. Can, like when you get that, that like That's foggy day burn. sunburn uh -huh. sometimes on cloudy days. So even if the sun isn't out, are you still able to get, I mean, you're getting infrared light or yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. Ultraviolet or infrared. I forget. Infrared. Which, infrared. So, so um, yeah, you'd still get a little sum sum. Uh, you, you don't want to be out there till you're sunburned. And right. this is not like the baby oil and the, um, you know, tan till you, you're super dark of the seventies. You remember that? <laughs> I did that. I don't know if you did. You might've been too young. But, I didn't, yeah, I didn't. I was too young for that. But no, that kind of, I'm trying to remember the television star who was just that golden brown. And I can't, who was it? It's like Lyle Wagner or somebody like that. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. Not a good thing. So if you're going that far. So my question is then being, if it's being carried by the, uh, by the, by light outside the visible spectrum, then do, do sunblocks and things then block the absorption or the triggering of the, of the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know what else you would think? Well, I'm just, it's cold out there. I'm just going to sit by the window like I'm a cat, mm -hmm. you know, and and just absorb it that way. Well, I know at my house, there's, the, my windows are treated with um, energy efficient, you know, blocking. Mm -hmm. so, so I wonder, ooh, yeah. Yeah. So you can't really do that. I don't know. Hmm. My assumption, and this is just my um, actually like like middle aged guy assumption, is that they wouldn't block out the the ultraviolet stuff because that's what would enable you to sort of greenhouse in a window. You know what I mean? Sure. Like it's not so much the light that needs to be blocked as so much the air that needs to be blocked. It's so, the heat. Right, right, which yeah. is a function of the air that once it once it radiates right. and it has right. to radiate, so you have to let right. that light through in order for it to radiate. So I don't know. So no. point being, it's not going to work. So it would go outside and no, sit, my sit on your deck. My assumption would be that it would work. It doesn't. It It's infrared. You said ultraviolet. Well, just outside the visible spectrum. Right. I'm just not sure that light, like, okay. Yeah. I don't know how windows are made nowadays, so I'm not going to go yeah, any farther really, down that I can't really go into it. This is the blind leading the blind. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but don't do it. Go down, go down on your deck, kind of out of the wind, in it's, a tank top, sit there for 10 minutes, decide you're cold and go in. And it's better it that way anyway. Yeah. And actually the cold will keep you from getting sunburned. So that's not... <laughs> well, 
no. No, well, yeah, well, I didn't, you know, I wasn't laying out in the 70s like you were. And I love the fact that you, were, one of the concerns was with the, with sunblocks and things like that. If you hit the waves, it's a very, what you, what you'd said, how you'd characterize the concerns here. It's just such a California concern. And if you're going to go surfing, be sure to. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but nobody goes surfing unless they're completely covered with Up here, green hair. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's true. So. Oh. The, um, it's a vitamin D in summary is more important than you'd think. Most people up here don't get checked for it. Um, if you want to go without your flu shot, you might consider supplementation, especially for kids. Super important. Talk to your provider. I'm sure that Dr. Parker, our pediatrician in town, would have a lot to say about it. Um, and I, I want to also kind of shift a little bit and lean into an article I wrote for a school in Humboldt County, a charter school my kids were associated with a long time ago. I was asked to, they're having a lot of sickness. There is a lot of sickness in town. So this is a similar um, phenomenon that we're seeing up here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a tridemic, I guess. We're seeing respiratory syncytial virus. We're seeing influenza, mostly A, and we're seeing COVID. And um, people are coming in really sick and super shocked that they're sick. <laughs> After making the decision to not get immunized, even a flu shot, like, like they look at me like I did this on purpose just to shame them about yeah. not getting a flu shot, which is not the case. Um, but if you if you want to go without your immunizations, which is a tried and true safe way of of staying healthy, um, there's some important <laughs> nutritional things and and others that we have kind of touched on here. But I want to remind people of right now. First of all, get your flu shot in October. The CDC just came out saying October, late October was the preferred day. Oh, you got vindication on that. I have vindication. All right. So <laughs> the next thing is forest bathing. Remember mm -hmm. we talked about that? It's a Japanese concept. We call it walking in the redwoods. They call it forest bathing. Every day. Um, I would think just intuitively, although this is my opinion, not data-driven, that this would be especially good for kids because um, this boosts the innate immune system, and that's kind of what kids rely on. Oh, wow, in okay. adults, we rely more on the acquired immune system. That makes so, sense. Um, but it turns out it's good for everybody. 30 minutes in the, um, walking in the forest is an immune boost for a month. It's better if you take a dog, too. I know. <laughs> it's a much better I am dog. living that this morning. <laughs> Me, too, when yeah. we're done. That's where I'm going. Yeah. And every day, I do this every, every day. With, and it's not just, a, it's about an hour and 10 minutes is what we do every day. And it's awesome. just amazing. And it now is. it's to the point where I, I'm kind of hooked and I don't think I can stop. And if I, I can't do it on a day and now daylight hours are so you know constricted this and time stuck with the rain the oh, last three oh, i don't mind the rain i can do the rain you go in the rain i go in the rain okay. she my dog's not down with it she actually yeah. turned back we got yeah we, we went out a couple of days ago in the storm she got about 50 yards into right. it and i turned around and she was gone and right. i'm like oh no and she's a little dog and you know did a fox get her what's going on so i go walking back sitting at the car <laughs> that's right why you do this to me I'll, yeah yeah you get that look i'll yeah. be waiting here for you you, yeah, monkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I totally, I think that that's, I mean, really, that's probably my first line of any sort of healthcare is getting outside. Absolutely. As effective as SSRI. So selective wow. serotonin reuptake inhibitors for major depression. Wow. As but, effective? Uh, as effective. But shh, don't let Big Pharma hear you. Oh my God. Right. Or this is kind of new data for us. I wish we had an industry that was like big forest that we <laughs> instead of big pharma. That'd be great. Okay, that'd be cool. <laughs> so going on vitamin D, I already mentioned that it, it cut like significantly cut into influenza rates um, in Japanese school children. Wow. Super important now because those kids are dropping like flies. A lot of mm. really sick kids. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, the other thing is uh, really important vitamin C and zinc. Um, these have two separate functions. Vitamin Z keeps viruses from going into the cell, mm -hmm. the human cell, and mm -hmm. replicating. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 milligrams a day is the recommended dosage, but it kind of is packaged in 40s. So if you did 40s, 40 milligram, if you had no contraindication, you did 40 milligrams every weekday uh -huh. and took um, the weekend off. That okay. would be good. Makes For people, the vitamin C? For zinc. For zinc, sorry. For zinc. Yes, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so it makes people a little nauseous, but you kind of get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then I, uh, healthcare providers also do quercetin, which is, I think, a bioflavonoid anyway, that helps stuff the zinc into mm. the protection position. Mm. And um, you can get that at Wild Rivers if you don't have a contraindication. Okay. Vitamin C, I try to get mine from diet, yeah. um, mostly because that's easy to do, especially with all the cuties, you know, the little satsuma tangerines. Oh, right, I'm right, right. I'm kind of right. a fan. You like so, <laughs> Yeah, 1,000 milligrams twice a day or dietary equivalent is easy to look up okay. online. Okay. And, and massive doses of vitamin C, that whole, that, another thing from the 70s, if I remember correctly, that's not a thing. Right? I mean, I, as far as from what I've seen, just passive stuff, you know, in the media, right. like the whole, all the, all, the, all the big, super massive doses of, of vitamin vitamins and the supplements and it's not like not very effective your body just passes them through and doesn't uptake them unless you have a yeah most healthcare providers interesting factoid they don't take multivitamins mm -hmm. because um that there's a concern that um if somebody has an occult cancer you're feeding it so people who take multivitamins every day s seem to have a higher risk of dying from cancer what's an occult cancer so uh, that would be a cancer that you don't know you have yet. Okay, that you don't see. That's occult, maybe not right, symptomatic okay. yet. Okay. So okay. most healthcare providers don't do vitamins. They they break them out specifically, mm -hmm. like maybe during for specific reason during certain times of the year. But mm -hmm. they don't they don't do the like massive vitamin dump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and the last thing is um, N acetylcysteine. Okay. Um, AKA NAC. Uh, super important. Uh, it has been, there's good data to suggest that it lowers the symptoms and severity of influenza. Mm -hmm. um, in kind of the early days of COVID, which we all know what was a no data zone, there were a lot of healthcare providers, especially ICU docs and intensivists who were um, using NAC in, in kind of a preventative mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's different. And um, most of us took it every day for a while until we had immunizations. But this is using it in acetylcysteine as a treatment, kind of um, lowering the number of days you're sick and the intensity of your system, specifically for influenza. But there's, okay. there's also this non data zone about it, it could help with COVID too. And this is something you begin after the onset of the illness? It's well, not. yeah, that's that's what the data show, but but a lot of nervous, you know, doctors who were doing it face to face with the yeah. beasts were doing it prophylactically, right, right. and um, I think that they're going to find out that it ended up being something that was mildly helpful or, mm -hmm. or maybe mild to moderately helpful, mm -hmm. and is probably worth doing as part of a Swiss cheese approach to staying healthy. So don't pick any one modality to save you, but do a bunch of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so this is one of the things that most doctors do. <laughs> Why is it called Swiss cheese? It's because of the holes. Well, think of stacking you... Swiss cheese. Okay, there's holes in Swiss cheese, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. so Hypothetically, you... those are the entrance points for the virus. Gotcha. So yeah. you're stacking them, so you're blocking those So you're those stacking holes, them, so okay. you're blocking this one, that gotcha, one, this gotcha, one, okay. that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. It's a real theory. I just, you know, I just I was at a virtual conference and um, Dr. Gandhi, who is the um, head of infectious disease, and she also runs the San Francisco uh, General Hospital AIDS Unit, which oh, wow. has a more official name than that. But um, I, I attended one of her talks virtually. And the woman she, from the CDC? Uh, no, I think Am she I thinking... works at UCSF. Gandhi. Oh, okay. Okay. She's been on. Like... The, she's been on a lot of, um, yeah, you know, national um, media and stuff. Anyway, she mentioned the Swiss Swiss, the Swiss cheese, cheese <laughs> model to prevent not only COVID but you know HIV, blah blah blah. So it's still up to date terminology. Okay. So I mean, here we are. We are. We're pretty firmly. We're you know second week of December. Pretty firmly ensconced in, in flu season this year. Uh, any indication here locally how's it, how it's going? I know in, in, in our news during the week that regionally there, you know, the hospitals, I know St. Joe's is starting to say, okay, all right, especially especially with kids, ICU's filling up again. Hey, heads up, everybody. Do you have any any take on, on your experience in Del Norte, how it's playing out? Yeah, I would just go to the corner and weep quietly oh, as gosh. an answer to that. Um, oh. So I worked at Walk-In yesterday. Mm -hmm. We saw about 20 people. That's Pretty up. much all of them had it. Wow. Um, some version of COVID slash um, influenza A slash RSV. Mm -hmm. It's so cool that we can test for that now, although it takes about 45 minutes to Which, get the results the RSV? back. 
All of it. All of it. Okay. All of it. Okay. Yeah. And strip. And, and so, so, so different from like your, your summertime Saturdays at the open door. Oh yeah. Where we're like bored out of our minds. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> right. So a lot of sick people, um, and a lot, of, almost everybody's shocked, shocked. <laughs> that they're sick and i don't understand you know the depth of their suffering and i really do and i and when i all i have to give them is something symptomatic i mean i someday i hope that i can say hey how about some n acetylcysteine there you go You're, you know oh my God, i'm gonna awesome. shoot that one to walmart and and um you know we'll get that filled for you and your insurance will pay for it i'm sorry i'm still stuck with your delivery your dramatic delivery shocked i love that <laughs> that's, that's how we talk to each other, actually. Yeah, really? <laughs> so <laughs> this clutch of the pearls. <laughs> I'm sick. What? <laughs> oh my god! All right. So yeah. that was a. Uh, um, yeah. <sighs> okay. So here we are into it. You're seeing it. Of course, it's uh, you know it's obviously having having an impact here. And and yeah, just the number, the volume that you that you describe at Open Door. Um, so if. CDC is now saying, you know, late October was the time to get your 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 uh, um, flu uh, immunization. Does that then necessarily follow that they're recommending, say, a second one later in the season? I think it depends on your individual situation. I last year got my they kind of made me at UHS get mine kind of what I thought was a little bit too early mm -hmm. because the infectious disease person wanted, you know, the numbers and she wanted the box checked and uh -huh. she wanted to make sure we were never going to call in sick and stuff. Okay. And so I did that and I just finagled a second one when I saw the second wave coming. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cause could, typically that's like February, March. We get that, that second yeah, wave. Yeah. I think I did it like, like third week in March okay. was my second one. This year I got the old lady one, which is, <laughs> which is the more effective one. And I was, I am like four months too early for old lady land, but um, I, there was great nurse, you know, discussion about whether this was safe to do and they uh -huh. decided to go for it. Okay. So, so um, what's the old lady one? It's just a higher effectiveness for older people. Or I think people. my parents have talked about that one. Right. Yeah, and yeah, it's okay. not always available. And yeah. if you're an older person, you should probably ask. And if you... If you're over 65 and you can't get the more effective one, then mm -hmm. you should totally plan on a second shot. Okay. Because in Del Nort, like for the last 20 years that I've been involved in medical care here, um, there's always a second wave. Has Does the weather affect it? Like if we have a wet year and winter goes on till May, uh, uh, is it a worse flu season? Have you noticed anything like that here? Not really. Yeah. I yeah, think I it depends on what's circulating. Okay. Okay. Cause yeah. 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 And then also wintertime, even though it's wet here, it's not that much colder. So it doesn't really mean that people are, are as impacted as they are elsewhere, but, you know, packed in like back East when the snow's out and you're packed in with everybody else all winter long, you know, I guess so. Although I, my guess is we were pretty packed in the last three days. I mean, that was I'm, packed in kind of weather, that's, even though it wasn't really cold. I just, you gotta, you gotta have, you have to be okay with the rain here. If I want. love the rain. I love the rain too. So low, right. I wasn't packed in. I was still getting out. But I, I don't. I'm, the dog I, wasn't coming with me. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, my mother's worldview that if I don't wear a sweater and I go out with my hair wet, that am I, am I going to get the flu? No, right. I'm more germ theory of disease. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Taking your lead from the late 19th century, Lynn Zabo and uh, all the modern science. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just, it just seemed like uh, I'm trying to understand here. And, and understand what's going to happen the rest of the I think it's the, the vitamin the D deficiencies. They're pretty shocking. What's the vitamin D deficiencies? I think that's one of the reasons people get sick. And then also uh, reluctance to immunize, which I think is a political thing. Yeah. And if, I if don't, I, huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't see that as much in Humboldt. Really? Yeah. I know. I really? That, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm not really, what I'm gonna now I'm doing it the, uh, so the <laughs> clutch the pearls the uh, um, am I safe if I'm concerned about everything we've talked about with vitamin D uh, and I want to do something about it but you know do I do I need to go and get tested and understand my levels or can I just go to go to CVS and, and pick up a supplement and start taking it in your your usual healthy 
yeah. robust self. Um, Just assuming that because of where yeah, we I live. Yeah, I think it's safe to do two or 3,000. And some people would say, that's hardly anything. I do five to 10,000, sure. But <laughs> if you're if you're going to fly blind, you better stick with two to 4,000, okay. I think. Okay. Yeah. And maybe not take it during the summer. It's not something that you're going to take every day to the grave. Okay. You know, okay. it's something that you, you probably should start... Um, you know, probably in October and probably take through May. Okay. All right. So. All right. Well, there you are. Uh, that is this week's Health Matters. Anything else, Lynn? Nope. Okay. Anything uh, Anything looking forward to next week about? I'm still hoping to get Jermaine here, Jermaine Brubaker, to talk about Narcan. And then Mike, with his perpetual schedule up in the air, rural pharmacies. Maybe we should uh, we should just gather up the equipment and, and maybe do... we should chase him. We should go to him, yeah. right? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Zabo, PA, thank you very much, and, uh, and we'll talk again on next week's Health Matters. Right, thanks.